So this is a great vector calculus question that I've been asked, so I'm going to jump into it and do it. Uh, so question 7a, sketch the graph of the path of the particle. Now 7a is not the interesting part, 7b is, so I'm just going to smash out 7a super fast. Uh, so if I want to sketch the graph of the particle, I want to convert this vector function to a Cartesian function. x equals at and y equals that. So from here we've got equation 1, we've got equation 2, we sub one into the other. Easiest way to do that. Uh, we say t is equal to x over a, and then we're going to sub x over a for t into that equation. Now, when we do that, we get something pretty cute. We get a squared and then x squared on a squared by just squaring both of those over 4. And those a squareds cancel each other out, and I'm left with x squared on 4. y equals x squared on 4. I can sketch the graph of y equals x squared on 4. It looks roughly like this. Now, there is a little bit of information in the question. a is always greater than 0, and t is greater than or equal to 0. Now, who cares about a? Well, oh, let's look here. Let's look at this thing here. The x-coordinate of our dot is always equal to a times t, and we're told that a is always positive, and t is greater than or equal to 0. That means that the path of our particle starts here, right, because at time zero, the x-coordinate is zero. And as time moves on, if a is always positive, then it's always going to move in that direction. So we don't put in the negative part of our part graph here because of these restrictions. All right, that's part A. That's the easy part. The next part gets wild. So it says, find when the magnitude of the angle between r dot t and r dot dot t is 45 degrees. Now, for us to deal with this, we need to know what r dot t is and r dot dot t is. Now, that's relatively straightforward. We're just finding the derivative of that and then the second derivative of that. Now, this is my first derivative, and this can confuse people because of this a. a is a number. It's like the number 5, right? So the question is, what is the derivative of 5ti if, if a was 5? The derivative of 5ti is just 5. So the derivative of a ti is just a. a is just a number. And same here where it says a squared, a squared is a number. A lot of people want to derive it and write like 2a, but that's not it. a squared is a number, so we just keep a squared there. The derivative of t squared is 2t, so I'm left with 2 out the front, a squared, and a t right there. And of course, 2 over 4, 1 over 2. Alright, so there's r dot t, r dot dot t is going to be equal to, alright, so 5i, what's the derivative of 5i? Well, nothing. The derivative of ai is also nothing. So, we're just going to have our j component here. Now, the derivative of, um, this says half a squared t, or a squared on 2, t. That's probably a better way to think about it. a squared on 2 is a number, t is there. The derivative of a number, t, is just the number, a squared on 2, j. Great. Velocity function, acceleration function. Now, we're finding the magnitude of the angle between two vectors. And if you're thinking of the angle between two vectors, you should be thinking about the dot product. So we've got two formulas for the dot product, and when you're thinking about the angle between two vectors, you should be using both of those formulas. All right, so the dot product of these two vectors is equal to the i component times the i component. So a times zero. 0 plus the j component times the j component. So a squared t on 2 times a squared on 2. That's a to the 4 t on 4, if I multiply those two together. Now that's one formula for the dot product, but there's also another formula for the dot product. And that other formula for the dot product is the magnitude of this times the magnitude of this cos the angle between them. So, what's the magnitude of this? It's equal to the square root of this squared plus this squared. That's a bit more complicated, right? That is the magnitude of that. All right, what is the magnitude of this? Well, a lot of people will want to use another formula like this. But because it's purely in the j direction, right, it's just straight up, the magnitude is just whatever that is. 
So we're going to multiply all of that by a squared on 2. And our final step is to multiply it by cos, the angle between them. Now the angle between them, we want the angle between them to be 45 degrees. Alright, so if we sort of tidy this up a little bit, and I'll just take it and sort of shift it over to here. This side here, nothing very interesting happening. We have A4T on 4. Now, what's going on here? Oh, hang on. I'm going to do something here in, in this step. A squared on 2, because it's, it's this times this times this. So what if I just divided both sides by A squared on 2? If I divide a4, a4t on 4 by a squared on 2, so if I do that division, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and when I do that, I get a squared, and then this 4 becomes a 2, the t will stay, and then 2 divided by 4, that's the same as 1 over 2. So what I'm going to be left with is a squared t over 2. All right, so that was this divided by that, so what's left over? Still this square root action, so the square root of a squared plus, and I might do this calculation while I'm here, uh, a squared t on 2 squared, so that's a to the 4 t squared on 4. Just squaring absolutely everything there. And then what do I have left? I have a cos 45. Now, what's the value of cos 45? We should all know that it's root 2 on 2. Okay, that's pretty nice. Um, what I note is that in the same way that I divided by a squared on 2, I can also divide by root 2 on 2. So a squared t on 2 divided by root 2 on 2, that's the same as multiplying it by 2 on root 2, which means that these 2s are going to cancel out, and I'll have a squared t on root 2 on my left-hand side, and I am going to have square root a squared plus a4 t squared all on 4 on the left hand side. Now, feel pretty good about that? Yeah, I feel okay about that. Alright, what can I do with this now? Well, what if I just like square both sides? Right? If I square both sides, let's do it right up here somewhere. I'll have a4 t squared over 2, just squaring that side, and then this other side here is just going to be a squared plus a4 t squared on 4. Okay, what do I have? I have a4 t squared on 2, I have a4 t squared on 4, well, that's interesting. What if I just make everything be over 4? Maybe that'll make my life easier. 2 a4 t squared on 4 plus 4a squared on 4, plus a4t squared on 4. I immediately regret that. Whatever. Uh, if everything's over 4, then we can just uh, multiply both sides by 4, and we'll just have 2a4t squared equals 4a squared plus a4t squared. I have 2a4t squared there, I have 1a4t squared there, so if I combine those, I'm left with a4t squared equals 4a squared. This. This is beautiful. All right, change colors and, and sort of v left here. Um, if I divide both sides by a squared, I'll be left with a squared t squared equals 4. And it wants us to find when, the, when, it wants us to find a time when the angle is 45. So, taking this equation and bringing it down here, I can start isolating t. So I can say t squared is equal to 4 on a squared. And then I can square root both sides and say that t is equal to 2 on a. And that is my answer. Uh, now you might be looking at like square roots and thinking about pluses and minuses and things like that. And I've also square rooted here and you might be thinking about plusing and minusing as well. 
You can have a little think about what's going on there, but it's because t is always greater than or equal to zero. So we're never going to have, this is never going to be negative because t is always greater than zero. Um, and a is always greater than zero as well. Okay, I like that. That's the answer. The answer is when is the magnitude of the angle 45 degrees? It's when time is equal to 2 over a, whatever a happens to be. It's a good one.